Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends. In this lecture we are going to discuss political thought and philosophy of one of the key figures in modern Indian political thinkers who uh, help in shaping the so called Muslim renaissance uh, in modern India or Indian subcontinent and along with Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan he was one of the leading figure or political thinkers behind the Muslim renaissance in the Indian subcontinent. So, from Muhammad Iqbal we are going to uh, discuss his uh, views on community and also religion and nation. In this lecture today we will uh, focus on Muhammad Iqbal um, and his uh, personal political life influences on Muhammad Iqbal and uh, his uh, philosophy or his uh, uh, conception of self the Khudi uh, and also um, his views on religious uh, recon uh, reconstruction of religious thought in Islam. And in the next lecture we will discuss his views on um, religion, community, nation etcetera and then we will conclude. So, um, Muhammad Iqbal is a very profound modern thinker who tried to reconcile a kind of uh, um, uh, a kind of contradictory um, contradictory forces uh, historical forces in a sense of uh, nationalism which is limited to the territorial or geographical boundary and the universalism the idea of uh, universal brotherhood or universal fraternity together so uh, in Iqbal there is a kind of reconciliation between these often uh, uh, seemingly contradictory historical forces of territorial nationalism on the one hand and the universal appeal of Islam on the other. And throughout his thought in his politics or philosophy or poetry religion or the Islamic traditions uh, uh, of thinking or theorizing or laws remain the basis of all his um, um, uh, activities including his political life, his political involvement, his views on nationalism or uh, uh, Islamic uh, universalism and also his views on self and the community. So, um, to begin with I hope many of you have come across this famous couplet of Iqbal where he says that Khudi ko kar बुलंद इतना कि हर तकदीर से पहले खुदा बंदे से खुद पूछे बता तेरी रजा क्या है दिस थॉट रफली ट्रांसलेट एज एलिवेट योर सेल्फ टू सच हाइट्स दैट बिफोर डेस्टिनी इंटरवींस गॉड हिमसेल्फ मे आस्क हिज स्लेव टिल व्हाट दोयत दो विल सो दिस एम्फेसाइज हिज फोकस और हिज अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ सेल्फ एज द बेसिस of all political or religious uh, uh, development or progress in society or in a country or humanity at large. So, for Iqbal self remain the uh, funding the basis for all his philosophical religious, uh, uh, religious thought and he believed uh, in a self which is constantly trying to act upon its belief or um, uh, values. So, uh, the determination of self and the uh, um, projection of uh, self in Iqbal therefore remains very uh, crucial to understand his philosophy uh, of um, uh, religious thought or uh, nation or universal brotherhood. 
So, uh, for Iqbal, the self or the khudi was very central in all his political thinking or theorization. Further on uh, this uh, nation, it is also interesting when uh, Iqbal is appealing to a kind of universal Islam, universal brotherhood. At the same time, he is also categorized as the, uh, as the um, a spirit behind the separate, uh, separate state. Uh, state for Muslims in Indian subcontinent or Pakistan and he is also treated by, uh, by Iran and considered as the uh, uh, spirit behind this um, um, uh, separate uh, nationhood. So, um, uh, while on the one hand as we have uh, uh, discussed just before, he was uh, focusing on self and considering uh, to project Islam as a kind of universal appeal cutting across the boundaries of race, uh, race, nationality, language, etc., or geographical boundaries, at the same time he is also deeply patriotic. So, some of his poems in early periods like Tarana e Hind, Sare Jahan Se Achha or Naya Siwala is, um, is about patriotic feeling or uh, towards uh, nationalism and the role of nationalism in human progress or human uh, self-realization. So, he, uh, he seems to often uh, engage with this uh, patriotic feeling about nation on the one hand and the actual realization of nation and how it, uh, it, uh, it is a kind of continuum for the further, uh, further um, integration of nation into a universal brotherhood, universal solidarity which we will discuss in the next lecture. But this couplet again nations are born in the hearts of poet, they prosper and die in the hands of politicians. So, Iqbal here seems to offer a kind of critique or a kind of a skeptical attitude towards this nation where on the one hand, it emerges in the hearts of the poets, but it may prosper or die depending upon the politicians who is responsible for its prosperity or its decline. So, nation in Iqbal thoughts remain a kind of puzzle and this fundamental tension between national boundaries on the one hand and universal uh, appeal or universal Islam on the other hand or pan-Islamic ideals on the other hand remains the basic uh, uh, fundamental tension in Iqbal political philosophy. So, um, through Iqbal, what we find is that Muslim renaissance in Indian subcontinent is by and large inspired by these two figures and their works, Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan or Muhammad Iqbal. Where Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan was a leading figure to begin modern education among the Muslims, Iqbal poetic vision and political insights laid the foundation for Indian Muslims, a political ideology which became the basis for the formation of separate state of Pakistan. And Iqbal tried to reconcile in all his philosophy, Islamic universalism with modern territorial nationalism. And therefore, he is regarded as the founding spirit by the Shia dominated Iran and Sunni dominated Pakistan. And so, that is a kind of appeal Iqbal has beyond the territorial limits of a, um, of a nation. And he certainly shaped the uh, renaissance among the Muslims in India, where he went beyond the modern education and re-established the uh, use and relevance of Islamic uh, laws for modern, uh, modern Muslims. He was also the most patriotic, Indian patriotic leader and initial carrier of his political life, he was in support of Hindu-Muslim uh, unity for freedom from British. So, he was also a patriotic leader and he is celebrated as the Pakistan's national poet. His poetry had an immense influence on the consciousness of Pakistani intelligentsia. It ignited the Muslim community, the values of Islam and brought them into the same manner. So, the uniformity is, that is a gift of Islamic religion to the Muslims population where he uh, when theorizing about the nationalism and uh, nationhood for the Muslims in India, he uh, gave this uh, interpretation that because of their religion, Muslims are uh, in this um, um, various 
heterogeneous uh, uh, communities uh, or uh, region, they have some kind of uniformity or similarity which is a kind of gift uh, of religion and therefore, they constitute one people whereas, for Hindu they have to um, uh, reform a lot of social, uh, social structure or social hierarchy to emerge as a um, as a single nation or as a as a single peop, uh, people whereas through religion he wanted to uh, to uh, project muslims as a given uh, nation or a people and therefore his philosophy or his interpretation becomes the basis for the demand for a uh, separate statehood, statehood of muslims um, in the form of pakistan in later uh, later years and uh, there again among the Pakistani intelligentsia also with uh, the celebration of Iqbal as a, uh, as a national poet of Pakistan also has some irony or contradictions where uh, the other side of Iqbal that is the universal solidarity or universal uh, spirit um, or brotherhood of Islam is somewhat reduced to a territorially defined nationhood of uh, Pakistan which, which seems appears to be a kind of contradiction. So, like Tagore uh, there is uh, this uh, transcendence in his thought from a nationalist patriotic thinker to a kind of pan-Islamic universal thinker in his thought. So, what we also find is Iqbal was basically a poet, but also ventured into the domain of politics and uh, he based his philosophy in Islamic laws and on that basis he responded to various challenges of waste. So, in his philosophy and thought there is a kind of constant dialogue or interaction with the modern western theories of self or individual or uh, community and also uh, the state. So, the philosophical basis of Iqbal's thought remains the Islamic laws and Islamic tradition. And he is celebrated for his passionate poetry on love, beauty and different layers of selfhood. But the other aspects of his life is often neglected mainly because of this false assumption that he certainly had some ideas on philosophy, but they were not consistent enough or they were more visionary, more idealistic or visionary kind of thing, very less practical application. So, there is this uh, categorization of Iqbal as a poet or as a passionate poet, but uh, not in the similar way his philosophy or his uh, uh, pan-Islamic ideals are taken as seriously uh, enough. So, his patriotic songs emphasizes on self, self which is in constant or ceaseless movement, self within a community and at the service of superior self. This is something which characterizes the philosophy and politics of Muhammad Iqbal, which we will discuss in this lecture. Iqbal historically was the product of that crucial period, which experiences a greater concern for the national self-consciousness. So, and therefore, the nation, nationalism becomes a kind of necessity for Iqbal to theorize about modern religious thought in Islam and how to reconcile the universal brotherhood or the message of universal brotherhood in Islam on the one hand and the necessity of formation of a territorial, uh, territorially uh, limited nation, uh, nation on the other. When Iqbal was articulating about the social and the political situations and challenges that India and the world was facing he had to respond and articulate and was deeply influenced by the growing national self-consciousness among the Indian intelligentsia. This was symbolized by the dualist tendency of a patriotic anti-colonialism and urge for social equality on the one hand and conservatism and prevalence of a religious worldview on the other hand. So, this tendency to formulate a national or develop a national self-consciousness was marred or compromised somewhat on this uh, or was struggling this two uh, this duality between um, patriotic anti colonial uh, anti colonialism on the one hand which also uh, focuses on social equality on restructuring of the social hierarchy 
on the other hand simultaneously there is the growth of conservatism or the prevalence of a religious world view both among the Hindu, Muslims and other religious communities. So, there is this simultaneous existence of nationalist feeling or anti-colonial feelings on the one hand and preservation of the religious world view or the conservatism on the other. Iqbal was trying to reconcile his thought and philosophy in such a value. And Iqbal belongs to the formative stage of Muslim nationalism in South Asia. So, the idea of Muslim as a nation, Muslim as a separate nation, Iqbal belongs to the formative stage of such uh, articulation and thinking. So, this formative stage of Muslim nationalism in South Asia, which was intricately linked to the religious reformation, which was characteristic of most parts of the colonial world. His thought is significant in this context in the sense that he not only tried to find in religion the spiritual expression of anti-colonialism. For Iqbal, religion is not just the uh, ex spiritual expression of anti-colonialism, but he regarded religion as the basis of alternative path of development, which is very distinct from the waste and the uh, idea of waste about individual, community and society. And this is because of his different multiplicity and plurality in his thought and uh, his response to the different aspects of life starting with the self, to community, to love, to beauty, to patriotism, to nationalism, to pan-Islamism, -Islam, pan the range of his thought and response is so varied that it is very difficult to reduce him, to limit him to any one of these concerns and ideals. And therefore, one of the thinker or scholar Herman he divides his work on basically three domains, which is the world of India, then the of Islam and the western thought. So, basically his philosophy revolves around these three domains. So, in the beginning of his political career or as a thinker, he was very patriotic and he sang the song of India like Sare Jahan Se Achha Vihav Se Tarana E Hind or Naya Siwala. Uh, then he also uh, theorized about Islam and how Islam can be the basis of uh, Muslim uh, nationhood and also pan-Islamic uh, thinking and he finally was also deeply engaged with the modern thought or philosophy in West and he was responding to their inadequate in his opinion understanding of politics which is a secular domain or the individual which is devoid of his spiritual or religious teachings and tradition. He responded to such Western thought about individual, self, community and nationhood or state. So, in Iqbal, we find this constant search for meaning or divinity in individual life which should be reflected in the nation or in the world also. So, against the dehumanizing consequences of materialism and totalitarianism of the modern West, Iqbal celebrated the individual's spirit and his or her capacity for self-determination. So, the first couplet khudi ko kar buland itna. So, that kind of thinking remains a kind of very powerful invocation from Iqbal towards the challenges of modern western thinking. Now, if we look at his early life and education, we find Iqbal was born at Sialkot, which is present in uh, Pakistan. Punjab in 1877 to a family of Kashmiri origin and his ancestors converted from Hinduism to Islam in the 17th century and this offered or enabled him to be influenced by both the belief system Hinduism and the Islam and he was situated in this confluence of Islamic and Hindu, uh, uh, Hindu tradition and he received uh, a combination of Islamic and Western education and he was influenced by his father who was well versed in Islamic theology and mysticism and he also had modern education in Scotch Mission College, the Murray College and the Oriental College in Lahore and there he also worked as a lecturer in philosophy in the government college at Lahore where he met T. W. Arnold and uh, he was a great British orientalist who inspired him to visit Europe for further education or higher education. So, following his advice, he went to Europe in 1905 and studied in Lincoln's Inn from where he completed his bar at law 
and he also studied in Trinity College, Cambridge, where he was engaged in reading Western philosophy. So, some of the thinking in Iqbal about self, community or nationhood and how um, the understanding of self in Islam is very different from the modern conception of Islam is uh, very, uh, uh, very powerful and comes from his reading with many modern Western philosophy and thinker. And for his PhD, he went to Heidelberg in Munich, Germany and he published his doctoral thesis which is entitled as Development of Metaphysics in Prussia. So, he stayed in Europe for three years from 1905 to 1908 and this had a great impact on his philosophy and thought. His introduction to Western philosophy offered him a kind of comparative outlook to the life and value systems of East and the West and this led him to engage with the reformation in Islam in later period. So, in 1930s he wrote a book called uh, Reconstruction of Religious Thought in Islam. This book is a mature work of uh, Iqbal which, which is the result of his uh, understanding of Hindu and Islamic tradition on the one hand and Islamic tradition and the western uh, philosophy on the other and that lead to the culmination of his thought and reformation which he desired to be promoted in modern Islam. So, after returning from Europe, he in 1908, he started teaching again in the government college and in this period, he worked closely with the Muslims nationalist like Abdul Kalam Azad and Muhammad Ali and urged the Muslims population to join political struggle for independence. So, unlike Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan who wanted to focus on education and do not necessarily fight or confront the British, Muhammad Iqbal uh, was uh, supporting uh, many na Muslim nationalists like um, uh, Muhammad Ali or Abdul Kalam Azad and wanted uh, Muslims to join this uh, all India struggle for independence. Um, and this is uh, uh, a result of his political involvement that he left the government job and started the practice of uh, law for modest living and simultaneously uh, continued to write poetry for which he was already became renowned by then. Now, to look at the political life of Iqbal, we find he had an active political life after his return from Europe and he was well received by the Punjabi elites and got a cordial relation with Mia Muhammad uh, Safi and he was made one of the joint secretaries of Punjab Muslim League, the uh, regional branch of uh, Muslim League in India. And uh, from then on, we also see a kind of growing communalization or communal separatism among the two dominant religious community uh, in Indian subcontinent, Hindu and the Muslims. And many Muslim intelligentsia leader and thinkers began to uh, 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 conceptualize or articulate uh, this separate state, uh, separate uh, uh, nationhood or separate um, status of Muslims who wanted to have a kind of uh, their autonomous religiously guided state and polity uh, in contrast to the politics of uh, Indian National Congress which was trying to promote a kind of more secular, uh, uh, secular politics. So, and this was the period when uh, Iqbal also shifted from a kind of patriotic Indian to a pro-Muslim uh, or a kind of separate identity for the Muslims on the basis of their religion. So, after his joining of Muslim League and um, his involvement with that, he became a critique of Indian National Congress on the grounds of it being Hindu dominated organization and also the secular outlook towards politics and state by the Indian National Congress which Iqbal found very uh, problematic for the Muslims who wanted to have their state and polity guided by the religious uh, beliefs and the uh, laws of Sharia and uh, Islam. So, he was uh, engaged with the National Liberal uh, League of Lahore from 1924 and got elected to the Punjab Legislative Council in 1926. His major agendas besides uh, national liberation uh, or uh, separate statehood for the Muslim included uh, the matters of land revenue and taxation, compulsory education. He also promoted 
provincial autonomy for the Islamic India. So, this idea of Muslim nationhood or separation of Muslims from the uh, Hindu dominated politics and state uh, culminated uh, during uh, this time and he also supported the separate elections for Hindu and Muslims. He was also elected as the president of Muslim League in 1930s. In his presidential address at Allahabad, he spoke on the vision of Pakistan and he also attended the round table conference in, of 1931 and I think 32, where he strongly advocated for the future of Pakistan. So, now we have seen how there are shifts in Iqbal from a patriotic Indian uh, nationalist in a uh, sense of uh, focusing or supporting Hindu-Muslim unity to a gradual uh, uh, shift or tilt in his thought towards, uh, uh, towards the creation of separate, uh, separate nationhood of Muslims in India in the form of uh, Pakistan. Now, if you uh, look at the major influences on Iqbal, we find that in, uh, in the early period of his life, uh, Iqbal was greatly influenced by the activities of Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan and his educational institution which is called Anjuman e Himayat e Islam. Iqbal was deeply influenced by his opinion on Hindu Muslim unity and the idea of national self help, but he could not agree with his pro British attitude and also maintained a distance from the idea of isolating the Muslims from the all Indian movement. So, Iqbal was in support of Muslims involvement in the nationalist movement which was unfolding in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, which is in contrast with Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan focus on the education and progress through education and his pro-British uh, attitude. Iqbal thought it may lead to the isolation of Muslims from the larger political happenings in, um, in the subcontinent and therefore, he wanted Muslims to participate in the all India um, movement. In this period, we find he was a passionate supporter of national unity and the independence of India from the British rule and he regarded political apathy and lack of unity as the primary reason for the sufferings of Indians. In his poems, Kuft Gaon e Khaak, Se It Safar, A Land Asleep and Tasveer e Darad, Portrait of Anguish, one can uh, notice his urge for awakening people for the pursuit of national liberation. So, for Iqbal, uh, the national liberation, national freedom or the freedom from foreign rule was the necessary or perhaps precondition for the reconstruction or regeneration of uh, uh, a community whether uh, religious or otherwise. Of course, for uh, Iqbal, he wanted to create a modern polity and state uh, for Muslims on the basis of um, um, Islamic laws. Uh, but that law, he, um, he, uh, he wanted to have a kind of liberal interpretation which can suit the needs and requirements of the modern Muslims rather than the stagnant or quietism or resignation of the Muslims practices over a uh, few centuries uh, um, uh, after their glorious, um, uh, uh, glorious uh, development in philosophy, arts and politics in medieval times. So, after this involvement with the nationalist politics and his demand for, uh, uh, for Muslim joining the national movement, uh, Iqbal was never really um, convinced or, um, or persuaded by the attainment of national liberation. For him, the ultimate objective was to have a kind of universal brotherhood in, uh, in Islam and which he do not want to confine in any national, uh, national boundaries and this remain a kind of unresolved tension in his thought. So, Iqbal wrote continuously for eradication of hostility among Hindus and Muslims in this period. He was for the all India nationalism and did not call for the isolation of Muslims which developed in 1930s in his mature works. So, he was also influenced by Sufism before he went to Europe and the Sufi idea of role of heart and intuition in the cognition process and the relation of man and God had an impact on his thought which he continues to believe in and on that basis he responded to the conceptualization of man or individual in modern western philosophy. So, after going to Europe, 
therefore the displacement of hurt by mind in the west was confronted by iqbal he regarded thought and intuition as equally necessary in the cognition of man and not just merely the focus on rational thinking the role of intuition in man's conceptualization of self his surroundings and his contribution in uh, his surroundings to make it better to transform it for the better is something which he learns from sufism of course which he criticized which we will discuss in the next class so a uh, western philosopher like kant leibniz hegel and nietzsche had a substantial impact on iqbal and his reconstruction of islam was largely influenced by the hegelian dialectics of man in constant motion man society and nation in constant motion which enables the making and forming of its identity and from nietzsche iqbal took the concept of ego and superman and used it in his politics and philosophy of islam and its modern liberal interpretation so although the influence of western philosophy is evident in his thought the major source of influence on iqbal was the islamic tradition and he had a great knowledge of persian classics and after a period of his writings in urdu he adopted persian as his writings because of his appeal and he wanted to create a pan islamic um, pan islamic community where persian is the language and therefore he began to write in persian and he was a great scholar or had a great knowledge of persian classics and was deeply influenced by jalaluddin rumi the prominent urdu mystic poet who wrote profoundly on the idea of self so the conception of self that iqbal uh, had is deeply influenced by uh, the islamic tradition and particularly so by uh, the uh, poems or uh, the thought of jalaluddin rumi um, iqbal was um, influenced by uh, the pan islamism of jamaat uddin afghani in the later period of his life iqbal appropriated the idea of pan islamism to establish the identity of muslims as a super class and supra national unity and this is the further development in iqbal so uh, we can find a journey in iqbal from a patriotic nationalist thinker to a separatist of um, uh, muslim nationhood and from uh, a uh, supporter of muslim nationhood in a kind of territorial um, uh, territorial limitation to a pan islamic uh, thinker who, who believes in the universal appeal of um, uh, islam so besides his belief in islam and uh, pan islamism iqbal also admired the russian revolution of 1917 and he wrote in his poems that it opened the new era for the uh, workers and for him it symbolizes the inevitable destruction of old systems in the hands of new but he did not think that the path of revolution as seen in russia will not work in colonial india it is because for him no new world can come without the change in the human nature and therefore he wanted to focus similar to gandhian ideal of swaraj uh, in a sense where the self and transformation of the self is the basis for the social transformation the political transformation and the economic transformation so now if we uh, look at his uh, concept of the self which is uh, beautifully uh, elaborated in two of his um, uh, uh, text which is called asrar e khudi or rumuz e be khudi so asrar e khudi is translated as the secret of the self and rumuz e khudi is the mysteries of the selflessness so iqbal while conceptualizing the self and selflessness is a kind of inversion of nietzschean idea of superman or ego or the use of hegelian uh, dialectics enables him to uh, to describe self as the manifestation of di divinity and self itself uh, acquires or realizes its true potentiality by uh, immersion of its ego in the larger self or in the divinity so there is a kind of uh, dialectics between the self uh, which is uh, the extreme and the super self or divinity which is like the ocean so the relationship between the two is very uh, beautifully uh, explained in his uh, 
text on asrar e khudi or rumuz e be khudi so for iqbal man is a free responsible being he is the maker of his own destiny and his salvation lies in his own um, business so the man has to attain constantly act to realize himself or herself and there he somehow projected man as a kind of self defining subject in a sense of confronting the divinity or the fate by his or her own activity so this freedom is viewed in the idea of ijtihad which offers the scope for independent or liberal judgments in the matters of islamic law so unlike many conservative or ulama's forces who consider their prerogative to interpret uh, islamic laws iqbal re establishes this ijtihad the tradition of ijtihad that allows the individual to form their own judgment their independent judgment about islamic laws and that can be the basis for the self realization self regeneration according to iqbal so in his understanding the self is a dynamic force and therefore he rejected the dominant notion of quietism in colonized muslims that submission to the fate and resignation from acting upon and empowering the condition of uh, the material or the moral or the spiritual existence uh, uh, iqbal was very critical of such quietism or resignation largely he considered sufism responsible for such quietism and resignation among the muslims and he considered the self which is a very dynamic force uh, and it must constantly act to improve the uh, condition of uh, 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 their community and uh, uh, the nation so therefore he did not consider the individuals as mere receptor of the destiny but actors on their own behalf so unlike many religious teachers and preachers who invoke the influence of fate and destiny on the lives of nation or community or individual iqbal is trying to subvert such logic to reestablish and this derives from uh, his engagement with modern western philosophy that man is capable of shaping his or her own destiny and uh, man should constantly act upon his beliefs to uh, shape his destiny without resigning to the condition of fate and therefore he, uh, he challenges such conservative or uh, um, uh, quietism in islam which generated after a kind of uh, many centuries of stagnation and he wanted a uh, kind of dynamic uh, reassertion of subjecthood or self to create a dynamic society and not merely resigning to the fate so for him quietism and inaction is the cause of decadence in muslims and he regarded action as life and in action as that this is something very similar to the vivekanand and his ideals of individual and the self which we have discussed so the true meaning of life is in fighting with the evils in life and thought and not in silently accepting the given so the force of acting the act is as important as thinking or uh, uh, believing in something so um, so iqbal was supporting a uh, conception of self which constantly tries to fight the evil so similar uh, to gandhi and idols so uh, a satyagrahi is not someone who simply um, uh, know what is injustice but someone who refuse to uh, uh, to accept any unjust laws and practice and prepare himself for the uh, punishment that uh, or sacrifice himself for the cause of cause of justice similar to iqbal the self should be constantly um, uh, fighting with the evils and trying to bring about justice bring about um, uh, transformation in the self and in the community so uh, for iqbal the remedy to all evils like greed injustice lies in the re- realizing the real qualities and cultivating the innate greatness this innate greatness is again the realization of divinity in the self and belief in the self activity or self help which can shape the destiny and not merely resignation to the fate or divinity 
So, for Iqbal, the remedy for all the evils like greed and injustice lies in realizing the qualities and cultivating the innate greatness of the self. This is possible through the understanding of the relationship of man and God. So, for Iqbal, man and God has a kind of uh, a relationship where man himself manifests the divinity and divinity manifests itself through man. So, that kind of uh, dialectic is uh, there in uh, Iqbal's thought also. So, he believed that there is no mediator between God and man and God is the birthright of every man and there is a kind of new interpretation of religious thinking where uh, for a very long time it is considered in many religious uh, tradition that there are only selected few who can access to God or who are capable of accessing and comprehending the God and then through them they can transmit the message or the ideas of God to the larger, uh, larger population. Iqbal tries to uh, subvert such logic and give a new interpretation where everyone is uh, accessible uh, to comprehend or to understand uh, the message of God and realize the God within his or her own, uh, own person or selfhood. So, he considered that the human beings have the right to happiness and he is free to shape his life and also to love God in one's individual way, not by some mediatory forces or intermediatory forces between man and the God. So, Iqbal believes that destruction of self is not demanded by the God. He wants the fullest development of individual self and hence he focuses on the role of desire in individual progress. Now, this is something very uh, radical in a sense where in many religious doctrine or certainly Sufism, the poverty uh, is something which is celebrated and which is uh, considered necessary for the understanding the message of God or truth and in that process uh, the self-destruction is perfectly uh, permissible and even uh, celebrated. Iqbal again try to reinterpret it where destruction of self is not just uh, uh, undesirable, but desire is the very basis for human or individual progress. So, uh, uh, but then this uh, desire is in the um, uh, connection with the community and again uh, here one can think of um, Iqbal's idea of self is not a kind of atomistic self in the modern uh, uh, as is as it is interpreted in modern uh, western philosophy. For Iqbal, this self which is, um, um, which is a reflection of divinity realizes its true meaning in the community which he con, uh, considered millet and that we will discuss in, uh, discuss in our uh, next lecture and uh, by realizing divinity individual realizes itself and the vice, uh, uh, vice versa. So, this necessitates his identification with the community which is based on righteousness or the Islam or uh, religious things and that therefore, Iqbal was not prepared to accept the secular politics or secular principle of politics which he considered as the major reason for moral and the ethical decline of the European society and he wanted Muslims to erect their political um, institutions or democracy. Uh, according to the laws of uh, uh, Sharia or Islamic laws. So, he regarded Islam as such a community because it is in accordance with the will of God and law which is the basis of righteousness. This ideal community of Islam is beyond the limits of time and space and thus demands not to be fragmented into nations and that is the uh, transcendent in Islamic nationhood from Islamic nationhood to a kind of pan-Islamic identity in Iqbal's thought. So, the Islamic community or millet is also characterized by a degree of unity and homogeneity and this homogeneity transcends the limits of race, class, uh, reason, etc. So, uh, according to Iqbal, the laws of Islam does not recognize the apparent natural differences of race nor the historical differences of nationality. The political idol of Islam consists in the creation of a people born of a free fusion of all races and nationalities. Nationality with Islam is not the highest limit of political development. For the general principle of the law of Islam rests on human nature, 
note on the peculiarities of particular people, the inner cohesion of such a nation would consist not in ethnic or geographical unity, not in unity of language or social tradition, but in the unity of the religious and political ideal or in the psychological fact of like mindedness. So, the religion and the political ideal of Islam or the religious ideal of Islam is something which is the basis for the fusion among different races, different nationalities, different geographical uh, uh, territory for, uh, for Iqbal and that is why there is a kind of continuum in his thought from a kind of uh, pro-Pakistani uh, uh, um, uh, leader or political activist to a kind of pan-Islamic uh, thinker with a universal, universal appeal. Now, uh, to discuss about his views on religious thought in Islam and its reinterpretation, which is his mature work and published in 1930s called Reconstruction of Religious Thought in Islam, Iqbal stated that Islam was experiencing a stagnation over a few centuries and that stagnation left it behind other philosophical traditions such as modern western philosophy, science and technology. So, therefore, the need was to re-examination and reconstruction of the philosophy of Islam without breaking away from the past. So, he embedded his philosophy in Islam, but he wanted its liberal reinterpretation and re-examination and this he wanted to achieve through three principles of reason democracy and modern knowledge. So, reason is the basis of this reinterpretation or re-examination of Islam and its ideals to suit the circumstances or requirements of the present day Muslims. Similar is the role of democracy and modern knowledge in such reinterpretation of Islam and he tries to use these uh, tools to make Islamic ideals and laws relevant for the present day Muslims and not something which is uh, relevant for, uh, uh, for previous centuries or previous, uh, previous generation. And therefore, he uh, permit the liberal interpretation of Islamic uh, laws and ideals. So, the reformation in Islam was considered necessary for the moral perfection of man on which ultimately depends the social economic changes leading to the justice. So, that is very similar to the Gandhian ideals of Swaraj. Influenced by Shah Wali Ullah, Iqbal insisted on Ijtihad, Ijtihad which is concerned with the independent judgment or liberal interpretation of Islamic laws. So, the right of Ijtihad is the basis of overcoming religious dogma and these religious dogmas are the basis of stagnation in any religious tradition which Iqbal was referring to. So, here he stated that only collective istihad will and not individual judgment serve the interest of the society. So, the istihad he democratize or radicalize the whole understanding of interpretation of um, Islamic laws where he allows the individual to interpret uh, such law in a kind of collective uh, spirit. Uh, to achieve social and economic transformation. So, uh, however, this idea of istihad remained a contested idea since the religious scholars or ulema considered the interpretation of laws as their prerogative. So, in many religious tradition as I have said, there is the idea of selected few who can access and are capable of comprehending the message of God and then through them it can be transmitted to the masses. But here Iqbal was subverting such logic and opening up uh, the laws and the ideals directly to the, uh, uh, to the individuals in their collective, uh, collective self. So, Iqbal uh, regarded the entity of man, nature and society in constant motion, development and in the process of formation. So, this he also acquired from his engagement with the western philosophy, the idea of a speed or the man in constant motion to acquire or to realize its own self. So, he considered the man, nature and society is something which is in the constant motion of development and in the process of formation. So, following the dialectic mode of nature, he reflected on the dialectic movement of society as well. And criticizing the mystical quietism he stressed on the significance of action and not 
merely resignation or submission to the will of God. So, he did not support the submission to the given, but emphasized on the active struggle against the evils of society. So, significant was action for Iqbal was that while explaining true existence, he argued I act therefore I am. So, for Iqbal in the realization of the self and in transformation of the society, it is necessity or inevitable for individual to act upon its belief and not merely think about himself or the society. And therefore, this ceaseless motion, ceaseless activity to transform oneself, to transform the society and the polity was something Iqbal emphasized upon and, and supported. So, Iqbal stress on the main submission to God, God also in a sense of considering the self as the reflection of divinity and then not necessarily uh, attaching it with the meaning of divinity or some kind of interference of the God in, the, uh, in shaping the destiny of the man. This realization of divinity in the self, which is the part of the uh, broader community, which enables the self to realize its own uh, divinity or um, uh, understand um, uh, the objective of the self in the larger community. Iqbal believes in the presence of God or the presence of divinity, but that does not deter him to understand the individual as an isolated atomistic self, but in connection with the other, uh, other self in the community. So, this man's submission to God did not imply fanaticism and being helpless before God. What he meant was the renunciation of egoistic desires and inclination and following the ethical principles of Islam, which is about brotherhood, universal brotherhood and coming out of one's own selfish interest in the larger interest of the community. So, for him this main submission to the God is coming out of one's own egoistic self to reconcile or to reconnect the self with the divine, with the God. So, this submission of man to God is following the ethical principle of Islam and not really a kind of resignation and seizing from the action. So, uh, while accepting that the world is created by God, Iqbal also maintained that the change in it depends on the labor and activity of man. So, uh, in Iqbal's thought and philosophy, the man, someone who is conscious or reflective being which distinguishes it from the other species who can realize or understand the injustices that should not lead to some kind of resignation or submission to the fate, but uh, the self must act upon its belief to transform the self and also to the society and the polity. So, that becomes the very basis for Iqbal's thought and philosophy. So, um, on this uh, lecture on Iqbal, his uh, personal political life, influences on Iqbal thinking and especially his notion of self and uh, his idea about religious uh, thought in Islam and its reconstruction. You can look at uh, some of these sources like sources of Indian tradition, there is a chapter on Iqbal and also Iqbal, poet philosopher of Pakistan edited by Hafiz Malik. Columbia University Press 1971, some of the chapters discusses different strands of thought in Iqbal and also his political journey in different phases. And also the 50 key figures in Islam and then incarnation India in 50 lives by Sunil Khilnani and also the other book called The Political Philosophy of Muhammad Iqbal by Iqbal Singh Sevier. So, these are some of the works which you can refer to for this lecture. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss his views on Qaum, Millat, Pan-Islamism, um, and uh, the connection between religion and uh, nation. So, thanks for listening. Thank you for your patience. Let us know what you think and uh, uh, what, uh, what is your feedback on this lecture. We will be happy to respond.